Alrighty, I'm in Denver at our office here in the US. Uh, we just finished building a green screen. So I figure now would be a perfect time to look at how to do green screen virtual production just from basic level in Unreal. So I was going to do this quite a while ago. I got an Ultimat almost two years now, I think, and had been putting it off doing other things. But uh, now that I've got a bit of free time on my hand and a big green screen, I figure now is as good as any time. So the setup we're using here today is an Ultimat 12. I'm using the 4K variant, but the HD version would work just the same. We're also using some Ultra Studio 4Ks as our video IO, but again, any Azure, Bluefish or Blackmagic device would work for this. And for the camera, I'm using a Panasonic UE150. Uh, it's a PTZ, a really nice one. And the benefit of this is it sort of has tracking data built in. So the PTZ outputs its zoom, its focus, uh, and its tilt and uh, pan and tilt as well. So that nice, easy way to get a bit of tracking data in to see this working. Now, the first thing you're wanting, going to want to do is make sure we have the Blackmagic plugin enabled, as well as the media utilities and IO, here we go, these two. We also are going to need the Live Link and the Live Link 3D plugin in this instance. Now I've gotten these, this Brutalist office level, I think it was free on the Unreal Marketplace a little bit ago, I can't quite remember, but that's going to be my basis for this setup today. Now the wiring for this setup is pretty simple, the camera, comes out and goes into the camera input on the Ultimat 12. The Unreal output goes into the background input on the Ultimat and the program output or the monitor output of the Ultimat goes into a monitor slash recorder. I'm using a Atmos Sumo for that. Now, once we've got all that hooked up, we can go ahead in Unreal and create a new media profile. I'm just going to create a folder called media Oops. And I'm gonna call this MP underscore ultra studio 4K. There we go. So you may see a project doesn't have proxies configured, just hit configure and I'm just gonna do one in, one out. That works fine. All right, for my output, I'm gonna choose black magic. Uh, 1080-5994, apply. I'm also gonna enable Genlock. Just gonna go black magic because I have a Genlock signal plugged into the ref input of my card. I'm gonna go oh, 1080 and 5994. If you did not have a ref input plugged in, you could just do the other option, which is Genlock fix rate and fix it to the same rate as your camera. Not ideal, but better than letting it run willy-nilly. All right, now I've got my media set up. I'm gonna do live link, so virtual production live link, source 3D uh, 000, apply, and we've got it. Now, now, if you have this camera yourself and are wondering how you set that up, just go ahead to the setup tab of the command page, go to tracking data output, connection type, make sure UDP IP is enabled. And then on here, you just wanna select client one, put in this com the computer you're working on's IP address, and I just did 40,000 because that's on Rails default. So we saw that was working because I have camera shop. Lastly, I wanna add a camera to my scene. So I'm gonna start by adding a target point so PTZ cameras won't track their location. They have no method of doing that. So they will just report their location as 0000. So I need to parent the cinema camera in Unreal to something that I can move around to offset to the correct camera. I'm then going to go ahead and grab my Cinecam actor like so and just parent it to the target point. Reset its values. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab the Live Link controller and choose camera one. And untick, there we go. All right, so now if I go ahead and move the camera around, we can see 
it's moving around just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and redo my camera. There we go. Now, I'm, next step is grabbing a tape measure and measuring from the floor or the floor of your green screen, I should say, to the center of the lens of the PTZ. In my case, it's 114 centimeters, so I'm gonna enter that in. Then I can just spin this target point around, maybe like that, and move it around a bit, like so, just so I can get the sort of shot I'm looking for. Now, when we're ready to do that, I can go to my cine camera, I can just enable game view. I can then go to the media capture window. Here we go. Add in my media output and hit capture. Now, in the Ultimate software, I'm just going to swap it to program so we can see. We can already see we're getting a bit of a, key, a, bit of a key going. So I just did auto screen and left it at that. This isn't really gonna be a tutorial on how to do the ultimate completely. Uh, if you do want something like that, let me know and I can do it. Otherwise, the ultimate manual has a very good layout of that. Now, if I move the camera around, you may notice we have a bit of a delay problem. Oh, whoops, let's turn. Yep, so it's like as I move around, the camera is sort of moving behind. Or the, uh, I should say the background is moving behind. Now, when we do this inside Unreal, usually we just add a delay to the tracking data, but this is actually the wrong way around. The video, that's when the background moves before the video moves. In this case, what we have is the video is actually moving before the background is moving. Now to fix that, we just go into the ultimate settings in the settings tab here, and then on input, so let me go back. So if you click input here, we have this frame delay foreground input. We can actually delay the video, the camera signal coming in to match our background. So I know, I know it's six, I've done, because I did this before, but a bit of trial and error, and you can find the ideal delay to line it up. So next what we can do is add a lens file to our camera to make sure it's looking nice and neat. So I'm gonna go ahead and go lens, and then I've already made one for the UE150. Put that in there. I'm also gonna go film back override and I'm gonna override it to the lens file. Then what I need to do is do my lens limits. So. If you, can have, if you have a look in the 3D plugin, we can see that the min and max that it uses to map the encoder in the camera to a zero to one range uh, is just sort of random numbers. So what I need to do is zoom all the way in, as you'll see, and then all the way out. And you can see it got stuck. Uh, oh, here we go, I was looking at focal. So now if I do it again though, we have the correct values. Let's go out a bit. Alrighty. Cool. And just like that, we've done probably the simplest possible green screen virtual production you could do. It's very reliable, very robust. The Ultimate does a great job keying. So it's quite a great little setup, especially you know, if you just have something simple doing. Uh, I'm gonna make a second part of this to show you how to use the masking features to remove the, uh, everything outside the green screen in case you have a small green screen like this. Otherwise, uh, make sure you like and subscribe and I will see you guys later.